What if you could write a component just once and see it run on web, Windows, Android and iOS while generating images with AI? Today, we're going to look at the .NET MAUI Blazor Hybrid and Web Template, a shared project, a reusable UI and zero copy-paste. We'll set up an image generator using OpenAI or Azure OpenAI, create the interface and launch it with Blazor and .NET MAUI as native. Sounds magical, right? Stay tuned, because at the end, you'll see the same component rendered on web, Windows and Android, without pain and without hacks. Let's begin. Let's start this video by analyzing what this template is from this new .NET version called .NET MAUI Blazor Hybrid and Web App. Basically, this is a template that, if we look at its description, says that it provides us a template to create an application that's basically a Blazor hybrid app with a Blazor web project and a shared user interface. What does this mean? Well, we'll have a specific project where we can place UI components, pages, etc. And these pages or components can be reused in both our Blazor and .NET MAUI projects because this template creates exactly those kinds of projects. What it's doing is simply separating out that logic or those user controls into a different project. So let's begin the demonstration. We're going to create a project called, for example, Image Generator Blazor Maui, just to pick a name. Let's click Next. We leave this configuration as is and I create the project. After a few seconds, we see the project is now created. And this is what I mentioned about this kind of template. You can see that we have three projects that we have been created. One project doesn't have any extension or any name after the dot. This project is the .NET MAUI project, which targets macOS, iOS, Android, Windows, etc. We also have a project that, as you can see, ends with share. Basically, this will be the shared between both projects, both MAUI and Blazor. And finally, we have this last project, which ends with .web. And this is basically the Blazor project. As part of this initial project, you can see that the MAUI project has a main page, as we've seen many times before. But something I want you to notice is that in the shared project, there is a folder called services with an interface named iFormFactor. What does this mean? Well, it's an interface that defines a couple of methods that allow us to get the form factor of a device or the platform we are working on. And you can see that this shared project is not actually implementing this interface. This interface is implemented in each of the specific projects. Here we have the services folder, for example, for form factor. You can see that it implements this interface we just saw. In the specific case of MAUI, a class called device info is used to obtain information about the device we're on, such as the ID. And for get platform, we have this property called platform, and that's how we display the device information. This functionality or the data obtained will be displayed in this folder called pages. Here we have home.razor, and you can see that it's retrieving this information. And even though here we are specifying that we are getting form factor dot get form factor and get platform, in reality, this information will be retrieved depending on the device where we run the application. In the case of Blazor, you can see that we also have the services folder. But here a different strategy is used because the term web is returned for get form factor and for the platform environment.os version to string is returned. This is how the information is displayed for each device with the shared project containing the contract of what needs to be shown. All right, let's do something more practical. Let's create an application that will allow us to generate images using Azure OpenAI and OpenAI. To do this, I need to create a component in the shared project that lets me display or generate the images. 
So I'm going to work on this shared project. For that, I'll click on Manage NuGet Packages and let's search for a couple of packages. The first one is the Azure OpenAI package, which you have likely used previously. Let's click here on the button that says Install. The next package I will add is the Teleric Controls package, which will help me create the interface much faster. You can use your own components if you wish. So for this, I will indicate that I want to install the Blazor components. And once I've done this, I'll go to the shared file called underscore imports.razor. I'll open it. And in this file, I'll copy and paste a series of usings so I don't have to add them repeatedly. Next, what we need to do is add the component or components we will share between the Maui project and the Blazor project. In my case, I'll go to the shared project and in the folder called pages, I will specify that I want a new Razor component. Let's call it, for example, image generator. You can name it whatever you prefer. Here, what I'm going to do is simply copy and paste some code that I previously wrote, so you don't have to watch me write all this code. Okay, now I have the code that will basically allow me to present a graphical interface and also generate an image. I want you to see how easy it is to generate an image using the Azure OpenAI and OpenAI NuGet packages. What I'm going to do is go or rather navigate here to the Solution Explorer. From here, I'm going to add a file called Constants, where I basically have all the configuration for my endpoints, access keys, and so on for OpenAI and Azure OpenAI. Then I'm going to go back here to my component and import these constants. Here, I imported a different namespace because the constants were in a different project but you can do this in your own project by creating this file from scratch. And well, that's it for the configuration. Anyway, when I publish the code for this project, you'll be able to find this file as part of the project and fill it in with your own information. Once we have these constants for this OpenAI key, the next step is to create an object of type OpenAI client by passing this credential and then an image client by invoking the get image client method with the model you want to use, which in my case is GPT image one. It's very easy to create this client. Next, to generate the image, you just have to call the generate image async method, pass in a prompt, which in this case is obtained from the graphical interface, and finally, for the GPT image one model, simply obtain the image bytes, convert them to base64, and display the image in the graphical interface control. And that's all you have to do to generate an image using, in this case, OpenAI or the OpenAI service. For the project to work correctly, what we're going to do is redefine the routes, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to home.razor and assign a different route indicator to this page. So we have the main page or this image generator page as the home page. Once we've made this change, the next step is to go to layout, then nav menu so that this main page appears as the home page or as the only page in the menu, because currently we have three items. So I'm going to remove these three items, or actually what we can do is remove these last two items and leave this first one, which simply references the home page. And if we were to run the application right now, you can see that we already have a graphical interface here. But if I start the image generation, you can see that the image starts to generate but we don't get any feedback about what's happening, even though in the code, in the page code, I did place an element that should provide feedback on what was happening. And this is because we are sharing a Blazor element or component in the Blazor project itself, but we haven't registered the styles or the behavior 
meaning the CSS files and the JS files that we need to be able to properly work with these components. You can even see that after waiting a few seconds, we get the expected image here. However, the buttons don't look good at all. And there's even an error saying, there's an error that isn't, it's not being handled by us in any way. So what we need to do is register those styles, that behavior that we'll need as part of the application, but this has to be registered in the specific projects. What we need to do is close this shared project, go to the Blazor project, specifically in this case, and what I'm going to do is go to the components folder and to the app.razor file, which is the one we see here. Here I add the necessary code as indicated on the Telerik site, which tells us what we need to do, what style sheets we have to add, which JS files we must include. This is part of the documentation for the specific control. And also in the body, we need to add a script tag here so that we can load the necessary setup or requirements for the Telery components. Let's run this application once more. And let's enter a new prompt. For example, a cat on the moon. Let's start the image generation and you can see that right now we already have a loader here indicating that something is happening, that something is being processed. In the case of the GPT image one model, it will take a little longer to generate the image because it's a model that requires more processing. So this generation may even take a couple of minutes. So be patient to see your image generated by this model. Okay, after waiting, we can see that here we have the image or the kitten on the moon and the design looks pretty good. We can see the prompt that was generated we have some buttons we could implement later, who created the image and the date. This could easily become a component for a social network application. So we see that it's now working properly and we no longer have the previous error. Now you can also work with Azure OpenAI models in case you don't have an OpenAI license or you have access to Azure credits, for example. And to perform that task, you do something very similar. In this specific case, you obtain an endpoint, an API key, and the Azure deployment name from the deployment you performed. And then instead of creating an instance of the OpenAI client, you create an instance of Azure OpenAI client. And also for the image client part, in this case, you get the deployment name. Since when you use OpenAI, you always use the same model name you want to use, depending on the model you are selecting for images. But in the case of deployment on Azure, you have to add the deployment name you set when you created that resource in Azure. And from there, the rest is exactly the same. You get an image using the generate image async method, processing is done, and in case you have selected, for example, a DAL E model, what will happen is that you will get an image URL. This means it is an image generated by the DALI model or otherwise by a different model. And once we have made this small change, which is actually not that complicated, we're going to start the application generation once again. Okay, here we have it. Let's enter the prompt one more time. It generated the image. Let's wait. Okay, and you can see here we have an image that looks pretty good. This kitten on the moon, even with its helmet that protects it from solar radiation. And basically, we already have here the use of the model from Azure OpenAI. Now, the interesting thing is that this component we have defined in the shared project can also be reused in the MAUI project. And this turns out to be extremely simple. What you need to do once again is register the styles part, the JS part that we registered in the web project, but now in the MAUI project. And this is necessary because if not, 
we simply will not have the execution of the controls, in this case, the third party controls. For this, in the MAUI project, we have a folder called WWU root, which you are probably already familiar with. And here we have the index.html file. So I will take the same configuration section for the third party controls that I got from the Telerik documentation. I have already added them here. And well, the next step is simply to specify this project as the startup project, as I have done. And let's test it on the Windows machine, a Windows device, to see how it behaves. This should then give us the execution of an application that is native, just as if it was made for the Windows operating system. Let's see how it looks. Here it is, and you can see it on the screen. We have the application here, and it looks pretty good. You can see that it is a Windows application. We can move it around like this, and let's type in a different prompt. And you can see that we have the same behavior as before in the Blazor application, because basically this is the same application. It's the Blazor app, only now added to a MAUI project. And we can see here this image that looks pretty interesting. And well, we see that it works on Windows. Let's change the device to an Android device, for example, to see how this looks. And after a few minutes, we can see here the application has been deployed with the same user interface. It looks pretty good. Let's try entering a prompt. We tap on Generate Image, and you can see that we have the same behavior, the same functionality. In other words, everything is working as expected in this application that started as a Blazor component. Here we have the application. It looks really good. Only now we are running it inside a MAUI domain device, where we could potentially get specific information from the mobile device to perform some other type of action. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your comments to let me know if you like this kind of project and what other videos you would like to see on the channel. I also invite you to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.